Okay. Welcome to the Monday, November 15th meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let committee members and staff introduce themselves. Benjamin Cheney. Meredith Crandall, staff. Steve Everett. Martha Smirsky, member. Liz Pritchett. And Eric Gilbertson. I will let the Meredith review the remote remote meeting procedures and process at this time All right i'm going to keep this fairly brief because our remote attendees are all members but we may have some people watching via orca that want to log in you never know all right hmm. for some reason it's not hmm. letting me do the slideshow I'm just going to scroll through this. Interesting. All right. Um, so for anyone who is viewing this meeting via Orca Media, um, you can participate in the in this design review committee hearing via the Zoom platform. Um, and you can do that using this link here. Um, or you can call into the meeting and plug in this meeting ID. Um, if anyone is trying to log into the meeting and is having problems, please email me at this email address. Um, that way I will get notice that someone is having issues and I can try and walk you through it. Um, yeah, mo most of the rest of this everybody knows is on. Um, just a reminder to please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise. Um, if anybody who's watching via Orca does log onto the meeting, please remember to wait until the chair recognizes you to start speaking. Um, I'll be keeping an eye on the, the Zoom meeting so I'll know when you pop in. Um, and if you do have comments, make sure to introduce yourself with your full name and your street address. That way we um, know where to send any, any copies of anything. Um, and also that the Zoom chat function should be used only for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Um, in the event that the public is unable to access this meeting, and I get notification of that through email, um, the meeting will need to be continued to a time and place certain. I'm going to hand the meeting back over to our chair. At this point, we just need to approve the agenda. Do I hear a motion from committee members to approve the agenda? So moved. And I second it. Okay, all in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Martha. Yes. Ben. And Steve, so the agenda is approved. Unless anybody has anything to add at this point, we can go to the first application for 130 Main Street, the Unitarian Church of Montpelier. And why don't you come forward since you're representing oh, so the church you can come up to the chair go at to the, the chair and round table position the microphone as you need to so that you can speak right into it um that way the people attending remotely can hear you right. and anybody on orca in the recording and yeah. introduce yourself for our audience yes i'm barbara conry i'm a member of the unitarian church of montpelier i'm here to represent them and go ahead and describe your application for yes, us. Yes, our application is with, it is a historic building at 130 Main Street. And we um, have been down a long process trying to revise our, our HVAC system, our heating and air conditioning, well, not air conditioning, our heating system so that we can bring in some outdoor air as a result of COVID. Um, however, we discovered that our existing heating system, half of it is in the basement, which is in the floodplain. So therefore, everything that we put back into the building, anything we revise needs to be in above the floodplain. So that means that we are putting in a whole new system for the historic portion of the building. Um, that's just a little bit of background. That doesn't actually affect our, us in terms of this application because everything on the heating system is internal. But what we also wanted to do was to bring in outdoor air because there is, none supplied currently 
and makes it impossible for us to get back into the building. So um, as a result of that, we worked with uh, David Slade Engineering and uh, developed a whole set of plans, which we hope to get bids on in the near future. And part of that is to put in some new louvers, uh, both an outdoor air intake and an, out and an air exhaust from the building. So if we start at the beginning of the application, um, so Barb, can you look up there? Ah, awesome. um, just tell me where to go. Okay, let's just start at the yeah beginning. Right there. That I think that is the first. Yeah, that's the existing building. Obviously, this is the Main Street side, and so two of the louvers are going to be located in the steeple, uh, right? And so right now she. Meredith is kind of hovering above that. If yeah, going to this next one, there's uh, actually three blank windows up there, which we have actually discovered were in fact not windows at all, but just applied trim to the outside of the building. So we are going to cut openings there and put a large louver behind it and be able to bring in outdoor air, which would be ducted down. It won't just come into the into the steeple area. So that is one of the louvers in the front of the building. And then the next one, on the, this is the existing side of the building. And then if we go to the next one, this is the north side. Yes, those three smaller, um, similar, however, those actually are currently open as louvers. We would be taking those off as exhaust air louvers. So it, very similar to what's happening on the front side, there would be a louver behind it, a large uh, mechanical plenum behind it to, uh, to draw air in. So that therefore we can sort of utilize the, the steeple, but without going all the way up into the upper part, which is, which already has wooden louvers in it. We didn't want to disturb that part of the steeple at all. So maybe before I go on, any questions about this area? Anybody have any questions? This is Eric. This is Eric. Yes. What uh, are the louver materials? Um, it's a metal louver with fixed fins on it. We can get it painted. I was assuming we would paint it black since the panels that are up there currently are black. Um, and so it will look particularly on the north side, which already does have some uh, louvers in it. Um, it will look very uh, much the same um, on the Main Street side, rather than the flat panels that we can see there now, uh, flat black panel, we would be seeing black louvers. Have you thought about using wooden louvers? Um, yeah, actually, the engineer said we couldn't do that with the available area uh, because <coughs> the um, the free area required, it means that you have to use a very thin material for the, the louvers themselves. And because they are so high up off the street, um, we really didn't feel that it was going to be visually um, objectionable. Are the louvers fixed or movable? Fixed. Fixed, okay. And they're quite deep. They're three inches deep. So they won't look un unlike the big louvers that are on the steeple up above. Yes. Right. So they'll be set behind the, the arched openings. So none of the trim will be affected. That's correct. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, should we proceed on to the, um, so that is one set of louvers. And then on the north side of the building, um, this is the side facing away from School Street. Um, this is the 1983 addition to the building. And you can see that it has, uh, you know, contemporary windows in it. Some reused arch top windows that were repurposed from the existing, from the original building. And so the, the 
proposal here is to put two louvers on that side of the building, one above the other. It's essential that those two louvers be 10 feet apart because one is an intake and one is an exhaust, um, but they will be the same size. Uh, we propose to trim them out with wood in a similar way to uh, what the window trim is, which is a pretty narrow profile. Um, and again, you can sort of, you can see from this um, rendering here that the, the louvers, the horizontal louvers on those um, will be visible as well. Barbara Zarek, um, the drawing actually shows these vents projecting out from the building. Um, are you talking about the engineer's drawings, Eric? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's just the um, the plenum behind. They would not, they, sh they would be flush with the oh. outside of the building. And in fact, the engineer is required to make sure that they're sealed. You know, when we provide the, uh, the casing trim, they're gonna need to make sure that it's sealed to that trim so we don't get any leakage. Okay, it just it, just that one drawing that I'm sort of a, a larger grill projected it's out. I don't know. Yeah. What? Um, no, I'm quite certain that they would not be. Is it one of the? I think he's maybe talking about the combustion no, air intake. Oh. Hood. oh, okay. Yes, that's that's a different situation. Um. So, Eric, were you talking about, um, hold on, I'm trying to scroll. I know that, were you talking about this, the combustion air intake hood? If you, it, if you go down there, actually, there's a, a, a drawing that shows it. Uh, keep going. Oh, there. this one? There you go, yep. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's. Just an oversight, but good. I'm I'm glad you caught that. No, because all of that transition and everything would happen inside the building. In fact, he's very specific. He does not want it to be underneath the drip. I would think. <laughs> uh, yeah, and there's nothing to support that duct work out there. So um, good catch on that, Eric. I, you know, I've looked at these drawings many times and never picked that up. Uh, I think, uh, Steve, I think we should have a condition that the louvers be flush anyway. Which isn't going to affect anything, but. No. All right. I'm going to scroll back up to the other. Is that, is that drawing the intake hood that's showing um, there? So, yep. No, the, the drawing here. You can look yeah. up there. But yes. Yes. See this right here? Section mm -hmm. six. That, where the, oh, sorry, it's hard because my, it's slow. So underneath there, see how the ductwork pokes out of the side of the house? It's just a, yes. a, a mistake in the engineering drawing. Okay. Yeah, and what's the number on that section? Um, hold on, I've got to move my, uh, <coughs> excuse me. The, you mean the number on the sheet number? No, just on that, the drawing itself below. It looks like section, uh, section five. five. Five, okay, yep. great. I can't quite read it here. Yep, nope, section five. Okay, that'll just be a good way to just to uh, identify it. Yep. And particularly when we, in, yeah. Okay. So all the louvers will be flush with the building. Ex yes, except for that combustion air louver, which we'll talk about uh, next. Right. Well, the, the, okay. well, it's called the hood. Hood, yes. Yeah. That's right. So I mean, the, actually, you're right. That's a better descriptor for the combustion air is a hood. Yeah. Yes. So that, which is this one. Yeah. Yes. As you can see, um, it's hard to see the size, but that would be a, a six inch duct coming into it. So it's, it's actually pretty small. Um, okay. Eight by eight, I would say. Um, so it's not going to look unlike kind of a residential size louver. Right. And um, I was realizing as I was looking through the packet tonight, yes, that here it's shown um, on the north face itself. Unfortunately, there was a later drawing. I actually emailed it to you. It didn't come through. Oh, it didn't. I got the email, but there's nothing attached. Okay. All right. Um, 
one of the, because we talked about this quite a bit, about not wanting to see anything more on the north side of the building. Um, and so what the proposal now is, is to take that louver and turn it 90 degrees and put it on the short projection of the wall right there exactly oh so it'll okay. face backwards it'll it'll face um towards, to the, the, rear. towards the right or towards right. the west um and it'll be flush against that short section of wall we felt that was the least obvious place to put it and also we showed it um in a later drawing painted black thinking that that will also make it more inobtrusive we have other uh, toilet room vents around the building that are painted out with the siding. It would also be possible to paint it out with the siding. Probably might... would disappear if you painted, painted it out with the siding. Yep, yeah. Because so... it'll disappear in that corner. Yes, I, I think it really will. Because the other thing too is that we've discovered from, from Audra that the, the out <coughs> outlet needs to come out two feet above the floor level inside the building, mm -hmm. which puts it at about the third, the third course up of this wide planing. So it'll actually have to be higher than what's shown here. Okay. And so we also felt that if we had to make it higher, we could turn it, then it would be really inobtrusive. Does that make sense, everybody? No, that certainly does. How yeah. wide is the siding? Siding is about eight inches. It's quite if, large. If the unit's eight by eight, if you tuck it into the profile of the siding, yeah, it would almost disappear. Almost disappear. Yeah, it may be ten inches, but it's it's definitely bigger than the face of the of the uh, louver. Okay. Of the hood. Yes. Well, in, in that location, nobody's going to see it. <laughs> right. We hope not, Eric. You know. <laughs> I it just it's a, there's a parking lot back there, but if it, you know, it's it's, right. not, it's not gonna unless you go looking for it, you're not gonna find it. And I guess I would ask too the grills, the larger grills on that side of the building. Uh, would you recommend those being painted the siding color? I would. Anything you can do to make it uh, less less uh, less the same as the color of the siding will make it disappear. I think more than painting it black or anything else, regardless of whatever the louvers are. If the louvers are black, but if there is a frame around it, or even if the louvers were painted to match the building, I think it would make it. Uh, disappear as much as possible. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering too. I'm not certain um, if we can modify the color of the louvers, but uh, at I least the trim around the perimeter, you could paint it again. If if that in any way, shape, or form could fit in to the horizontal lines, in mm -hmm. other words, line the top up with the lines of the siding again, and paint as much of it as you a color it to match the siding, I think would make it disappear as much as possible. So you think Matt, uh, actually painting out the casing trim as well to match the siding would make it less obvious? Yes, okay. it wouldn't stand out. It would just tend to disappear into the, right. into the siding. The, um, on the lower floor, the intention was to have that louver, the top of that louver, match up with the window adjacent to it. Um, I think yep. it may actually be possible to do that with the upper one as well. It's just we're coming into that critical 10 foot separation. Yes. No, I would, whether you match it to the window or actually if you keep it up as high as you can to the freeze board above okay. it, yeah. I think would give it, I think that would make it again, less obtrusive. Okay. Uh, Barbara, this isn't a, isn't a design review thing, but the air intake we talked about, does snow pile up there or in anything? Uh, I uh, know are you talking about the combustion air intake? Yeah. Well, yeah, um, it's, 
it does, but now it's going to be five feet off the ground. So it it's okay. Yeah, I just wanted to, I, I don't know the building that well that, uh, yeah, I just to make sure it wasn't going to get blocked by snow. No, that's good because, yeah, there is definitely a roof that dumps snow there. Um, so, you know, the fact we have to raise it up not only to flood level, floodplain level, but in fact, two feet above floodplain level is in that case a, a benefit. A little less shoveling. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> I assume you. Absolutely. You're right, Eric. That's something that has to be clear um, during the heating season. If you raise it up, it's actually above the sill of the window anyway. Yeah, and right. so you, if the snow got that deep, I'm assuming you would remove it anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I can't remember ever seeing the snow get that deep in that particular area. And of course, we have to keep the doorway clear. Yes. Back there anyway. Does anybody else on the committee have any other comments, questions, or suggestions? No. Okay, if not, I can go through the criteria. I, I do have one more thing is that I would suggest using a flat back paint on that, uh, on the louvers to, uh, in the front. So they're, not, so they're not reflective. Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. I added that into the recommendations that the flat black paint recommended to avoid any reflective issues. So through the criteria, number one, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. The removal of historic materials, nothing is being removed. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Deteriorated character defining features shall be repaired. That doesn't apply here. Any treatment that causes damage to historic materials, including but not limited to chemical or physical treatments, such as sandblasting, shall not be approved. The installation of these louvers is acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect to be compatible with the massing size, scale, architectural features, detailing and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. That's acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, Trash storage and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screened from public view, acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building that's acceptable for this application. And all in favor of the application, speak your names. Eric. Ben. Yes. I say yes. And Steve, yes. So the application is approved. Thank you very much. Do you want to? Um, yeah, so Barbara, Explain you the next... come and sign this once Steve does his thing. Okay. Um, and then I'll take it back. And um, this doesn't, I don't think this requires site plan or anything. So Audra should be able to get this permit out pretty quick. Okay. Just sign it right below my name there. So awesome. in terms of the specific, um, 
colors and things like that. Does so, that appear in there as well? Um, so the because technically design review doesn't um, cover color anymore. Oh, really? Um, I think that you know the the input you got with the recommendations mm -hmm. of having it match the siding. You know, you can go with that. I right. can't. I can't. That's not something I can actually enforce anymore under the zoning regulations with the way the design review regulations got changed. Um, but I think it's a really good recommendation. Are you right. adding that in? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so he's going to add that in as a rec as a as an option, sort of. Right. Um, right. So, for an option or recommendation? Recommendation. And so, the, the just black on the. Uh, yeah. Louvers and then the yeah. So it's not going to be everything else to match. The, the yeah. Body. It's the, the flat black would be on the upper and the steeple, and then the louvers and exhaust hood on the side of the building. Anything you can do to m match the color of the siding would just make it disappear as much as possible. Yeah. And, and if we cannot change the color of the louvers on the north side, would flat black be the best? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But we will put the casing trim in the in the siding color for sure. Yes. Not draw it out. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, and so that'll be a recommendation on here. It won't be listed as like a condition of the permit. I understand. But yeah, that's on going to yeah. be on there. Okay. Um, and you'll get a copy of this form as well as the permit. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Barb. What we said was just on, uh, for that north wall, we just said the louvers on the north side can be made less obtrusive by using a flat back black color on the louvers and any trim be painted the same color as the building siding. Again, just to make it disappear. Uh, excuse me, Steve, did you put in there that they should be flush with the wall? Because that drawing does show them projecting. Yeah, that one drawing. Yeah. Oh, she, yeah, he can't hear you. You have to be right at the microphone. <laughs> we definitely want that because we want that louver seal for the building so that there is no um, weather leaking in the building. Yeah. And again, the louvers would be flush with the building wall. The intake hood obviously can't be, but again, that's very small and tucked in the corner. And will be painted out with the siding. Siding, yes. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And Thank good you luck much. with your project. Thanks so much. Has anyone had a chance to look at the minutes from the November 1st meeting? Yeah. Uh, Any uh, questions or comments? Nope. I move that we accept the minutes for the November 1st meeting. I'll second, second that. Third. All in favor of the minutes, speak your names. Eric. Yes. Ben. And Steve, minutes are approved. Does anyone have any other business at this time? No. Nope. Adjournment is the only business left. Okay. <laughs> do I hear do I, do I hear a motion to adjourn? That was one. And I second it. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Eric. Martha. Yes. Ben. And Steve. Meeting is adjourned. Next meeting will be Monday, December the 6th. Great. Thank you for coming. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 bye.